Uh, I'm uploading another video today. Yeah, I've already uploaded two videos. One of which probably will not be of interest to... Only one of which will probably be of interest to any side of my viewers. Uh, anyways... I'm here to tell you about how I got started with my interest in radio. Uh, first of all, to start it off, I'm 14 years old, I have Asperger's Syndrome, and that makes you have, uh, rather odd interests for that age in almost every situation. And if they're not odd for your age, then they're at a pretty huge strength. Like, the person might have a normal interest, but might know everything about it, putting their normal brain peers at risk of anything, really. <laughs> Anyways, my interest just happened to be radio. Uh, I visited a lot of Boston Market stations. Uh, let's see which ones I've visited. I've visited the CBS radio cluster. I visited the Beasley Media Group cluster back when it was still Greater Media. I visited the, uh, uh, I visited, or at least I attempted to visit the, the uh, iHeart Media cluster. I visited WMNP and WADK in the Newport, Rhode Island region. I visited, uh, uh, Sand... Ba San Sandbab, whatever it's called, Sandbab, I often just call it Cape Cod Broadcasting because that's what it prefers to be called in the Cape Cod market. I visited Mount Washington Radio and Gramophone in the North Conway, New Hampshire, Freiburg, Maine region. Uh, and that's pretty much it. But, uh, yeah, those stations are quite a mouthful and I hope to visit other stations in the future. Uh, anyways... And I also am planning on visiting the iHeart Media Providence, Rhode Island, New Bedford, Mass cluster in the coming weeks. How I started with DXing, like pretty much every other DXer, was by accident. In 2013, I got a fantastic e-skip opportunity. I've only e-skipped twice. Both of them were in that very year. I was doing a band scan, and I came across an unknown station on 92.1 FM and 92.9 FM. 92.1 is, of course, home to a semi-local, as is 92.9. Both of them can be local, like at times, in signal for the Cape Cod region. It turned out that one of them was a Jacksonville, Florida station, and the other one was a Nashville, Tennessee station. Over the next... Over... Ever, ever since then, I've looked forward to go, going to Cape Cod every summer and DXing, which I've gotten stations. Tropospheric DXing has dominated it. I haven't gotten any escape opportunities since. But uh, I've gotten stations from Ball Harbor, Maine, straight down to Cape May, New Jersey, which is pretty darn good. And, uh, yeah, that's good. In Maine, in Maine I've DXed quite a ton. Uh... In September of 2016, I was there, and suddenly with a dinky pair of headphones, which did not have any at least visible antenna, I was getting two Cape stations like locals, and all the full power Cape stations were at least making it kind of in. I was on the beach, in case you were wondering. I've also gotten stations, a few, but quite a few of them actually from the mid coast, including WQSS, WMCM, WBQX. And, of course, WBCI, which has one of the largest signals for all. I've gotten uh, WMME in Waltham, Mass. I have gotten WHOM a ton of times. In Providence, Rhode Island, you can just, well, go to my Bandscan video from a few weeks ago, where I recapped the Bandscan that I did in October of 2016, where I got a lot of New Hampshire and Maine stations as locals. Or semi-locals, really, is a more accurate term, along with a fairly above-average of Cape Cod stations. But, aside from that, the only other south-facing station was WMMP that I was getting an above-average reception from. The New London, Connecticut stations were completely, uh, completely absent, including WMOS and WBMW, which had their fringe contour go over Providence, portions of the city at least. Anyways, other DXing opportunities I've had, uh, in North Palmer, New Hampshire, last year, for New Year's Eve, we were up there, and I was able to receive a few Boston stations coming in faintly, but nonetheless coming in. Uh, 
in Boston, Mass, uh, in October, well, Newton, Mass, last year, I was able to get WMMP coming in decent, and on that same day, a lot of people were able to get WCRI, but on my radio, WATD came in instead. So, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> uh, anyways, my interest in radio, I can definitely foresee going into a career. As in, because I'm into radio programming, and, in fact, I'm actually, one of my mentors is the radio programmer from North Conway CHR station, uh, Magic 104 WVMJ, if you're watching this, Gino Devaney, I hope you like me shouting out your name. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.